Hi, my esteemed members. Um, today's video lesson, or this video lesson, focusing on central theme of science and science and religion in uh, Jekyll and Hyde. Okay, I'll, I'll be as quick as I can. Plenty of information as ever. Um, press pause, take notes, do as you do. So why is science and religion important? Okay, well, there are two opposing views of science represented through Jekyll and Lanyon. Whilst Lanyon is more practical and traditional, Hyde band pedant is what Jekyll calls him, Jekyll uses modern developments in medicine and psychology to explore matters of the mind, reflecting a more supernatural element. Scientific balderdash is what Lanyon uses to describe Jekyll's views on science. So there's a, a couple of key contextual bits of information you need to keep in mind and incorporate into any uh, exploration of science and, and or religion uh, with regard to this novella. Darwin's theory of evolution was published in 1859, which states we evolved from animals, contradicting the teachings of the Bible, which states we were created by God. Stevenson draws on this conflict and uncertainty that lies at the heart of Victorian society, um, and he uses it to explore the inner workings of the mind, of characterisation and setting. Also, uh, with that with a link to that as well, psychology emerged as a science in the 1880s. So it was an area that was really quite new and exciting and one that interested Jekyll, obviously. OK. Areas to consider when looking at the theme of science and religion. Characters. Well, which characters? Well, Jekyll and Lanyon. Where would you say Utterson fits in? Who does he align himself with? He's good, old, close friends with both Lanyon and Jekyll. Do you think he's more conservative, more traditional, like Lanyon? Or would you say that he's cast his eye towards Jekyll and maybe the criminals that he represents with a bit of envy, perhaps? OK, well, blimey, sun's bright. Um, <laughs> I'm almost transparent now. Um, you can still hear me, at least. Um, context and setting. Victorian London and its rep repression. Darwin's theory and its impact. Um, so what bearing did these have on science and religion? OK, you could get a question on that. Um, incidents and consequences. The underlying conflict within society. Jekyll and Lanyon falling out. Jekyll taking advantage of modern develops, developments in medicine and psychology. OK, there's plenty there. Some further observations. Remember, Victorian society is quite religious. So God and Satan are referenced throughout the, novel, the novella. Um, pretty much in relation to Hyde and evil. And remember, religious society, heaven and hell, sins must be punished. Uh, and a greater emphasis throughout the novella on evil rather than good. So from various characters praying for God's help and others looking for God's forgiveness, Hyde is frequently compared with the devil. Um, you know, Utterson asks for God's help. Poole asks for God's help. Jekyll asks, only God can save me now, I think is his sentiment at one point. So religion is the lens through which Stevenson explores good and evil. Nice little line you can have. Religion is the lens through which Stevenson explores good and evil. Science can be linked with the supernatural. It is after exhaustive scientific experimentation that Jekyll arrives at his potion. We don't realise at the time, but it's by accident. Uh, this contrasts with the more traditional Lanyon and reflects the conflict existing within Victorian society on these matters. Ultimately, Science is used to explore the two warring factions of good and evil that exist inside one man. So, quotations, because you'll need them. And you'll see, uh, as you watch my video lessons, that a lot of the quotations are replicated from video to video, which means that, which is great news for you, because it means you can uh, limit the number of quotations that you need to uh, be able to recall in the exam, and you can apply them to whichever theme or character comes up. So, here we have again, Dehumanising imagery, describing or Enfield describing Hyde, comparing him to the devil, black sneering coolness, really like Satan. Uh, quite a bit gothic as well, so lots of things you can connect this quotation to. Um, Utterson keeps up with his studies in theology, a volume of some dry divinity on his reading desk. So some um, Bible study or uh, theological um piece of work on his study so he on his desk so he he keeps up to date with um theories and thinkings on religion does that suggest he aligns himself more with lanyon or more with 
uh, Jekyll in terms of science. Remember, he's a lawyer, so he's quite pragmatic. If ever I read Satan's signature upon a face, it is on that of your new friend. Okay. Um, use of sibilance to highlight Utterson's concerns about the evil nature of Hyde. Sibilance, repeated S or SH sound, serpent-like, Satan's signature upon a face. They've only differed on some point of science. This is an explanation as to how uh, Jekyll and Lanyon fell out. So Utterson about Jekyll and Lanyon may seem trivial, but it's kept them apart for 10 years, indicating a profound difference, reflecting perhaps the struggles of society at that time, grappling with the publication of Darwin's theory of evolution and its consequences. They have only differed on some point of science, but it's quite a profound difference. Um, and there's the line between the two of them. And as I mentioned, um, this is what Jekyll feels about Lanyon and his attitudes towards science and maybe the wider society. Hidebound pedant Lanyon, scientific heresies. In other words, he's turning his back on science. He should, he should be embracing modern developments and advancements. He was now no less distinguished for religion. So Jekyll's good deeds include being involved with religion. Reputation of state is very important. He later becomes upset that Hyde undoes all these good deeds. This is at the point when he's finally managed to free himself, or so he thinks, of Hyde's influence. And he does charitable work. He's known as one of those fellows who does good. Um, so religion is important to Jekyll as much as science was in helping him release his alter ego. Poole calling on God's help. I alluded to this uh, a minute ago. God grant there be nothing wrong. Is a thing that cries out to heaven. Jekyll locks himself in his cabinet in the throes of despair. Well, only God can help him now. So, you know, Poole describing what he's heard. Um, Utterson, what he's hearing. A thing that cries out to heaven. Pleading for help because science has failed him. So there's an interesting point. Science has let him down. Science has failed him. What's left? He turns to God to help him, but doesn't get any help there either. These quotes highlighting the internal battle raging within Jekyll between behaving as he's expected to and struggling to control his inner impulses. Links the theme of duality. Also, you know, any question on character, character of Jekyll and the internal conflict and how science and religion plays its role as well. Okay, so you... You who have so long been bound to the most narrow and material views, you who have denied the virtue of transcendental medicine, you who have derided your superiors, behold. So Jekyll's anger towards Lanyon, but also his excitement as he's about to witness Hyde's, as he has witnessed Hyde's transformation, highlights the difference in their attitudes towards science and modern developments in medicine. The other side of the fence, oh God, I screamed, and oh God, again and again, this is Lanyon's reaction to that transformation. Uh, again, uh, to the traditional uh, is view, looking to God for some kind of help and deliverance. And yet I shall die incredulous. And he does. He, he's dead within a few weeks. He he's kind of dies of shock almost because he can't grapple. He can't um, process. He can't assimilate what's just happened before his very eyes. They get a very supernatural, um, gothic aspect to the whole novella there as well. In chapter 10, Jekyll explaining how he believes the physical body can be easily altered, reflecting the modern developments in science. Certain agents, so um, powders or potion or whatever, I have found to have the power to shake and pluck back that fleshy vestment. So, in other words, you know, he's physically very different as Hyde when compared physically to Jekyll. And he's found some some chemical reaction, some um, uh, kind of way, in, um, some, I don't know, order or instruction or um, combination of elements that, that has allowed him to physically change. So to, to summarise, Science and Religion. Charles Darwin published Origin of the Species in 1950, 1859. 1859. Idiot, Mr H which introduced the theory of evolution to the public. Darwin believed that all life evolved from primitive forms and this caused a clash within Victorian society between this and the predominant religious views of creationism. 
This clash is represented through the differing beliefs of Lanyon and Jekyll and links with the overall theme of duality. Psychology also emerges as a science that in the 1880s, an interest that Jekyll pursues through his exploration of the workings of his own mind. And the usual exam relevance, right, obviously any question on science and religion, but you can incorporate it into questions on the characters of Jekyll, Hyde or Lanyon, maybe less so, but Utterson. The theme of duality, context, Victorian society, um, repression, 1880s, modern developments in science, uh, Darwin, etc. The creation of tension and or mystery, especially when linked to setting as well. The intentions of Stevenson, what message was he trying to uh, attach to uh, the theme of science versus religion? Okay, right, that's plenty for now. See you again later.